Hello, this is David Allen, and you are watching Sporting Icons. So a few boxing fans here in the UK and of course just MMA fans in general will probably know Michael Venom Page. Of course, he's currently managed by David Hay, or at least I believe he still is. Anyway, he suffered his first loss um, a few weeks ago in MMA and he was talking about Anthony Joshua and he's saying from experience, he ain't buying the fact that Joshua wasn't concussed. He knows that Anthony Joshua was concussed. And this is what Michael Venom Page had to say. For those of you who don't understand how concussions work, let me break it down. After my knockout to Douglas Lima, once I stood up, I was completely fine for the rest of the day. Once I felt dizzy and sick, I threw up and I felt fine again. Went on holiday and wound down. When I got back to London, random little things would make me dizzy. If someone called my name and I'd turn around, I'd feel dizzy. It's almost like that feeling of standing up too quick, but in random little motions. It can happen a lot. This is why even up to now, I haven't been allowed to spar. My coaches won't let me because I still have checks to do. And that fight was five weeks ago and the concussion is ongoing. Imagine being knocked out two weeks ago. You're still having these little spells and then Andy Ruiz Jr. punches you. It sparks up that little feeling immediately. I've seen Anthony Joshua get rocked and still compose himself and be able to continue. He has a chin. We saw it against Vladimir Klitschko and Dillian White. Ruiz's shots were glancing, but AJ was still on rocky legs in the seventh. Before I heard rumours, it looked to me like there was something up. I understand why they're trying to hush it all up, but concussion does affect you. So that is Michael Venom Page's statement. So what MVP is saying is that through his own experience, he knows that a concussion isn't something that happens right there and then in the fight. You could get hurt, but then you're not going to feel the effects until days later, maybe even weeks later, and it's still ongoing. So what he's saying is he doesn't believe that he wasn't concussed in sparring. Now, listen, we don't know if Joshua was badly hurt. We don't know if he was knocked out or knocked down in sparring. All kinds of rumours about Joey Dueco doing it. Joey Dueco, um, of course, is going to be fighting uh, Maria Gassiev soon. Um, but he hasn't confirmed it or denied it. But people... I have heard people say about Joe Dueco that, well, if he didn't do it, then he would say, no, no, it didn't happen. But people understand if it did happen, why he's not saying it did, um, because he's been told to be quiet, which is why he's got his fight with Gassiev, even though Dueco is saying that um, he already had that fight with uh, Gassiev lined up for a couple of months now. But listen, even if it didn't happen, he's not going to say it didn't happen. Why? Because it's good profile for him, isn't it? Why not? But what Michael Venom Page is saying is that he could see the obvious signs. Now, this is one of the things that I said. Now, I'm not saying that Anthony Joshua was concussed. I've never said that. But what I am saying to you is that it wouldn't surprise me, which is what I've been saying ever since I saw the fight, because his punch resistance was non-existent. Yes, one punch on the top of the head, sure. Okay, that's going to mess you up for a round or two. But ultimately, he just never recovered. Every little shot that came through, whether it be a body shot, even shots on the arm, Joshua was all over the place. He couldn't compose himself. It didn't matter what he'd done, what he did. He just didn't look right. In the build-up to the fight, when he's being introduced to the ring, he was stood there, he was having a neck massage. Eddie Hearn said, yes, he had a sore neck. Listen, a sore neck could have been from sparring. A sore neck could have been, he slept funny. I don't know why people are saying that it sleeps funny because it's not funny when you have neck pain after sleeping. I've been there, many of you guys have been there, we wake up with like neck pain. So maybe it was something as simple as that. But it's not a case of anybody reaching, it's just a case of people know what it is when they see Anthony Joshua fight. You see when he's not quite right. Joshua doesn't always look right before a fight, I'm not saying he does, but his punch resistance was absolutely shoddy. We've seen him get banged by Vladimir Klitschko and Dillian White, and he's managed to recuperate himself. We've seen him get um, um, headbutted by Carlos Takam and get some pretty decent shots landed on him by Takam, and certainly Povetkin for the first two to three rounds. But yet, every little shot that Andy Ruiz threw was rocking him. He was all over the place, which is why he was getting battered and going down and having to get up. Now, people say how, how he's a quitter and whatever. Listen, I don't buy that he's a quitter. I don't buy that at all. If you're a quitter, you don't go down four times and stand up four times. You just don't do it. But he did look confused when, when the referee was telling him to step forward. 
and he didn't do it. So the, so the, so the referee uh, waved it off. He did spit his gum shield out. But again, a lot of fighters do that. And yes, I understand when people say that's a sign of giving up. Again, yeah, maybe. Maybe he did give up to a point, but the fact is he did get up off the canvas four times. So if people want to say, say how he's chinny, if he was chinny, he'd have went down and wouldn't be able to get up again. But I think that he realised at the point that it doesn't matter what I do, I can't recover. So what's the point in taking too much of a beating? So from that perspective, I can understand why he went, you know what, I've had enough. Or, or he was trying to buy himself a few extra seconds when he was stood there. Maybe it was that. But as MV Michael Venom Page was saying, is that you don't feel the effects in the fight. If you get a concussion during the fight, you're not going to know that you concussed. And we know that uh, he was having tests for concussion after the fight. You don't really get concussed that quickly. Um, as far as I understand, concussion is a bit of a build-up. Concussion is something that could happen a few days ago, a few weeks ago, and the effects will start to linger. You don't get concussed straight away in the fight from one punch, and then a few rounds later, you've got concussion. I mean, maybe you do. Listen, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert, but that is my understanding of it. And I'm sure many of you guys will uh, will correct me on this one or back me up on it. Depends on uh, who's the expert and who isn't. But I feel that Anthony Joshua, is there a problem or was there a problem with him? Certainly there, there was a problem. I mean, Eddie Hearn confirmed he had neck pain. So even that alone is going to affect you. Anybody who, who has any kind of neck pain, you will know it's very difficult. It's difficult to bend down. It's difficult to turn your head. It's difficult to do a lot of things and focus as well. Which again, Joshua just wasn't putting any kind of moves together. Yes, people can say, but for the first two rounds, he looked okay. And he did manage to knock Ruiz Jr. down. It's a fair point, but no, he didn't look great. Watch the fight back. He didn't look great in the first two rounds. He didn't look great. He started off bouncing on his feet. But then after a few seconds, he weren't bouncing no more. His um, uh, finding the range, not existing. He didn't find his range throughout the whole fight. The one thing that he would have known and the one thing that Rob McCracken would have known is you don't come into the distance with Andrew Ruiz Jr. Andrew Ruiz Jr. has actually got fairly short arms. Joshua reach is far, far superior to Andrew Ruiz due to the height and everything. So all Joshua had to do was just keep him on the outside, but he kept coming into range. That, that is an amateur mistake, amateur mistake. Listen, everybody can have a bad night at the office, for sure. Nobody's taken anything away from Andy Ruiz. I know people say, why don't you give Andy Ruiz Jr. praise? I've given Andy Ruiz Jr. praise on plenty of occasions for it. Regardless of what happened to Joshua, Ruiz did what he had to do. Maybe he could do the same in the rematch. Maybe he can't. We don't know how the rematch is going to go until it happens. But certainly there are so many people saying, yeah, there was a concussion there. There was something that wasn't right. You, you could see it. We've all watched Joshua fight. That was not Joshua, or, well, it was Joshua. It ain't no clone, but it was um, a Joshua that didn't look right. He wasn't fighting correctly. He wasn't walking correctly. He wasn't looking the same way that he usually does. There were so many things wrong with that fight. When I was doing the live stream, as they were announcing the fighters, I was saying it, and many of you guys were saying it in the chat. Something's wrong with Joshua. It don't look right. And look what happened. It could just be a case of he's one of these Brits that can't travel. It could be that. It could be a case of the occasion got to him. It could be a case of he overlooked Andy Ruiz Jr. So even with or without concussion, he was overlooking him. Even Andy Ruiz was saying it before the fight. When these guys met, he said, I could see him looking at me and he was looking right through me. In other words, he was looking past me. And that's his big mistake. Again, look what happened. Now, I know some people say that, that uh, this was a dive. Joshua was doing this to give confidence to the likes of uh, Deontay Wilder and Fury and that. So, so when the time comes, they're more willing to fight him. So he took a loss. He took an L. I don't buy that. Or Likewise, I don't buy the fact that he um, lost on purpose. So the rematch becomes even bigger, which means he gets more money and all this kind of thing. And it's a good comeback story. Again, I don't buy that at all. I think that uh, Andrew is junior, beat him. Joshua didn't go in there to lose. I don't buy any of that, that he threw his loss away. I, 
I don't, I don't guarantee that at all. Sorry, I don't see that at all. But anyway, I mean, listen, that's my thoughts on it all. Of course, you dropped me yours. Michael Venom Page says he knows the signs of concussion because even now, five weeks later, he's still going through the effects where every little thing can set it off. And listen, you get hit by a heavyweight, listen, something's going to trigger. But listen, it could be wrong, right? It could be. Anyway, drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, and of course, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.